love instead of the music. It's me, Brian Brushwood. <laughs> Joined as always by my BFF, formerly of OAK, it's JRY. What's up, Justin Robert Young? Oh my God, Brian, you heard about Chuck E. Cheese? Uh, you know what? I'm I'm familiar with uh hair chuckles. Yeah. So here's the problem, man. They wanted to phase out the animatronic band. I mean, well, that's good because I've never once ever associated either Chuck E. Cheese or Showbiz Pizza with an animatronic band. Who does that? Yeah. Everybody and also everybody that still wants to go there, which is mostly nostalgic parents that want to bring kids to the thing that they went to as a kid. And pedophiles. Well, you got to appeal to all demos, but <laughs> I, I, all, all pedos, all demos. <laughs> Sorry, I misheard you. Go ahead. That was me gracefully trying to acknowledge your joke and move on. Uh, 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 you slapped it down. And so now we sit here. How much more do we want to talk about pedophiles? Well, I don't know, man. How much stuff you got? <laughs> Oh Welcome shit, the is the guy. internet, I feel like the internet's out Whatever, fuck it, we're rolling Everything's on the podcast <laughs> So here's the thing with Chuck E. Cheese Yep I got a solution for him Good This isn't a, this isn't a comedy bit This is an actual Sharks, I have the solution Rebrand Chuck E. Cheese As A brewery Because every millennial parent that I know takes their kids to fucking breweries, which are open early in the day and just put the same band there. It's now just the coolest fucking brewery you've ever been to. And it's got the, the Chuck E. Cheese band literally just invest in your own beer, Chuck E. Cheese beer, uh, uh, uh make the same shitty pizza. Cause guess what? The, the, the food at breweries aren't great ever. So have the exact same thing. You've already got everything you have. You just need three different versions of IPAs that you give clever names and uh, have everything else there. The same stuff, but now less kids for birthdays, more parents who are spending more money based on what they are going to drink. I nailed it. Uh, I am the best at this. <laughs> Actually, I think you are, uh, especially because like what you could do is what if what if you positioned it as an upgrade where it's like, uh, oh, man, back in the old days, we could only afford animatronic robots. Yeah, boo hoo. Guess what? Now, every single night we have a live cover band that does novelty knockoff cover songs related to pizza of all your favorite hits. Yep. Uh, it's Chuck and the Sleaze and, uh, and, and, and it's, it's, it's actual humans performing every single night. Like we see, maybe you and I have spent too much time in Vegas is what I'm starting no, to think. No, look, no, literally the same show. If we went to East Austin and went to the hippest fucking dive bar and they had just the exact performance that happens at Chuck E. Cheese from 1 o'clock to 7 o'clock every single day. It would be the coolest bar in town. The same thing. You don't need to change a fucking note. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold all on. you need is four IPAs that, to be totally honest, all taste the same, but they all have clever names. They're all like, like, uh, 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 uh ha Hopperly Rodham Clinton or whatever. Like, you know, that's that's it. That's that's all you need. And and now Chuck E. G's is fucking uh, reborn. God, well, now all I want to do is make hop puns. But 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 the important thing is like, okay, get a live band to come out to replace like so that makes it an upgrade. Why uh, are you wait no, why are you replacing the robots? The robots are the draw. Mm. You are the problem. You are private equity. You are the reason why Red Lobster went under. All you want to do is fix a thing that's already there. Uh, I, I, no, the reason that Red Lobster went under was the untenable price of forty of of no uh, no 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 all you can eat shrimp. No 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 no. <laughs> that's what they want you to think, sheeple. 
That's what they want you to think. No, it was bad private equity deals and the fact that Thai Union, which was their shrimp seller, pushed them into selling endless shrimp, despite the fact that the uh, 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 people who were actually running the restaurant said, no, I'm, all, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in seafood uh, business uh, lore, man. I'm plugged in. A lot of people don't know that about me, but when it comes to fish sales, I'm the I'm I'm the man. Okay, okay, okay. So 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 you're mm, okay. Your target demographic is dads who just want to remember the good old days and have an excuse to take the kids off their wife's hands for a little bit, right? No, my my understanding is that. People aren't going to Chuck E. Cheese in the same way they used to because it is no longer the social coup that it was in our generation. Kids that were born in the 70s and 80s and as Chuck E. Cheese was the coolest thing around, arcades were the coolest thing around, uh, and animatronics were the coolest thing around. That was, that was the kind of shit you only saw at Disney. Now, all of a sudden, it's on your block. You definitely want to have your birthday party there. None of those things are interesting now. Like, video games are on your phone. You see that literally out of the womb. My my newborn daughter is going to be playing a, a free-to-play game on, on iPad literally minutes into her own existence. Uh, animatronics are, like, you, you have... Uh, Teddy Ruxpin essentially set the death knell of that, uh, and that was way back in the 80s. So now the only thing that that matters to are people my age, your age. And so that's why barcades are interesting because it's like, oh, I can go to a place, drink alcohol and beat X-Men with my friends the same way that I remember beating X-Men with my friends when I was a kid. But let's go all the way there. Let's put Chuck E. Cheese. Let's put the showbiz pizza gang singing their dumb pun songs. But if you're kind of fucked up, you might be into it. And also breweries. Our places where people bring their kids. I mean, yes, 100%. As a matter of fact, uh, 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 there's a number of places that, uh, like like uh, RIP Nutty Brown Cafe uh, used to be one of those. Still resentful that we never got to see the last performance of uh, Huey Lewis in the news. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, okay, so so there's got to be some aspect that we shake it up with, right? Like, like um okay. Let's go. Well, I, what are you pitching? When I'm pitching, you can't is, replace the robots. I'm sorry. The robots are there. They're there. Change wow. what the robots are singing. <laughs> now they're just doing straight covers of wet ass pussy. Okay. Yes. Dirty songs from the robots Hold that on. you remember as a kid. Hold on. How about this? How about this? You make a, a press release saying that... Chuck Get a bucket and a mop. Uh, uh, Chuck E. Cheese is back in adult form. Go ahead. Chuck E. Cheese does a formal press release claiming, mm. air quotes, that they've updated everything. Everything will still be animatronic. It's just that they're letting AIs run everything. Oh... So, as a result, some of them will be, like, news of the day, like, uh, 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 Donald Trump trying to court those libertarians. What are you gonna do again? Yeah. Give us Covis. Covis? Covis? Covis. 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 And then all of a sudden, like, I don't know, drones fly out or some shit. But, but my point is, is like, is like lean into the AI thing and then make that part of the story where every single night it's different. Isn't that, a, isn't that the thing with uh, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's? This is Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, I've this just is. Created. But like, arguably kind of cooler and less murder. Introdu introduce yourself so people who have never heard your voice know who you are. Hi, yeah. folks. My name's Nathan. I'm Resident Tech. Okay. Yep. Uh, uh, he definitely got rid of the echo. Thank you very much. Hey! Nathan. Okay. I, I I ain't never played no Five Nights at No Friends. Well, all, all I, 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 I neither have I. All I know is that it's about a Chuck E. Cheese that goes crazy and uh, uh, they kill everybody. Well, which I imagine 
if if there are animatronics that go crazy historically through fiction, there's only two reasons why it happens: AI or ghosts. Like, or or a rich gentleman who wants people to solve a puzzle to learn a lesson. Oh, yeah, you're right. They're programmed to do it. Yeah. So, all right. Three ways that animatronics <laughs> go crazy. A billionaire who's uh, programming them to do it. AI or ghosts. Are we sure we can't think of any other way that animatronics go crazy? Well, I... I, I uh... Malfunctioning, just straight out malfunctioning. Yeah, but 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 uh, so. But so, that's only when you set it up in the first scene where they're like, like, oh, this is Chompy. He chomps so hard. Good thing he only eats carrots. And then you know, obviously, in the uh, uh, end of the first act, he bites a child's arm off. Okay, all right. This is so evil that I hesitate to even. Explain Bring this because, into the world of animatronics going, going yeah, evil. Yeah, yeah. This pure, okay. pure science that you're perverting. No, so, 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 uh, chapter one is uh, a, you you tell everybody to go. Oh man, that's like a throwback to Chuck E. Cheese or Showbiz Pizza, and then they spend the first part of it performing that. But then, over the next twenty minutes, they do a lot of photography and uh, video capture and face recognition and social media profile searches and cross referencing with AI game theory things, and then it gets like it becomes like Five Nights at Freddy's. It becomes an escape room, is what I'm saying. Is is basically? Oh, you're back to talking about making Chuck E. Cheese good. Uh. Well, I mean, I was talking about ways that animatronics go crazy in movies. Uh, I'm I'm here for either because I got another one. Okay, they're actual murderers pretending to be the animatronic band. That is very close to what I was going to propose. Yeah, which was, they're actually a band pretending to be an animatronic Entronic band. band. But yeah, they're actually just like you know. But then they 19, murder everybody. Okay, I was going to say like nineteen-year-olds looking for a break, like they just need flight time, so they pretend to be animatronics. Uh, all right, new pitch: <laughs> a billionaire ghost, Howard Hughes. Okay. Uh, He's on chat GPT and he figures out a way to make the machines at Chuck E. Cheese go crazy. I, I, uh, okay. Uh, It's called the aviator made the Chuck E. Cheese bots go crazy. (laughs) Okay. Uh, real quick, uh, opening scene. Do, Uh do, Do you do a cold open like out of time or do you do Howard Hughes in heaven? Like, like, these bathrooms are still too gross. How can I mess with humans? Yeah. I mean, it depends on how we're going to structure heaven, but he's got to be rich even in heaven. Like there's got to be, there's got to be like there ways that people lessers. are like, yeah, there's got to be people who are like, 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 Oh, I'll, this way, Mr. Hughes. It's like, would you, you don't think in heaven cause it has a very egalitarian kind of aesthetic yes. to it. But so, but in in our version of heaven, he's still rich, and there's still people who so they, uh, refer to him with honorariums and shit like that. They're they they're in heaven, and they're in a party, and there's somebody who's like uh, who wants to get into a certain section of the party, and and he's like uh, somebody's like, excuse me, holding a clipboard. Uh, what did you do? And they're like, I cured cancer. And you're like, mm, I'm not seeing it. Oh, Mr. Hughes. Well, what did he do? He invented the airplane. Yeah. You mean the source of all my misery and travel? And he's like, yep. Mm-hmm. Boom. Uh, real quick. Yep. Uh, total side note. You know, Leonardo DiCaprio played Howard Hughes in the movie. Oh, yeah. Apparently going to play Frank Sinatra in another movie, which means he could Eiffel Tower Ava Gardner himself. Look that one up, friends. That's a that's a joke I like to call Wikipedia it. Anyway, no, we're moving on. Nope. It's not funny nope. if I explain nope. it. Nope. It's no, not no, funny no, no, if no. I explain it. No, no, no. It, it, uh, to be honest, there are times I hear, uh, I felt just now like I was in the presence 
of Dennis Miller. I felt like a joke was so smart and so good that I couldn't possibly get it. And normally I don't get to hey, stop. You Dennis know, here, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Leonardo DiCaprio. It's going to play uh, Frank Sinatra. Did you hear that, babe? Did you hear that? Yeah. 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 Play Howard Hughes in The Aviator, which means. He could have Eiffel Towered Ava Gardner himself. I don't want to go off on a rant here, but <laughs> I mean, I mean I th thank you. Listen for here, cha cha. <laughs> thank you for indulging me, <laughs> because I will never have this experience in real life. Thank you for cosplaying me, interrupting. <laughs> uh, okay. Where are your buttons? Uh, which you button? lose your buttons? You oh no, you got your buttons. Oh yeah. Show oh, off yeah. your buttons. Go go oh. go full screen. Go oh. full screen. And show off your buttons. Oh. And let me show you my buttons. Uh, first one says afuera, afuera. Uh, second one says abolish the TSA. Well, those are really uh, emotionally and politically charged buttons, Brian. What do they mean? Ah, uh, uh, you know what? I I don't speak English, but I do know that afuera means. Hooray for my genetically identical dogs. <laughs> Por qué? <laughs> oh, oh, do, do, do you not know the story, Nathan? No. What? Really? Cue Qu up, up the video. Cue okay. up the video. I went to the Libertarian Convention to cover it over the weekend in Washington, D.C., in the Washington Hilton, which I didn't realize was nicknamed the Hinkley Hilton, because that's where John Hinckley shot Ronald Reagan. Anyway, uh, uh, in the basement of the Washington Hilton is a charmingly retro, which I don't know if it's retro futurism because they remodeled it or if it's literally just like that because it's how it's always been like that. Uh, uh, an awesome place for the Libertarian Convention, which was the exact same way you would imagine any convention back in the 60s. It looked amazing. Uh, the only difference was it was vape smoke instead of cigarette smoke. And uh, 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 there was a bunch of cool stuff, but I knew that there were two things that Brian cares about. Number one, abolishing the TSA because he is a, a principled uh, constitutionalist who believes that that is an organization that should not exist. And B, the fact that there is a viral video with Javier Millier, the uh, uh, president of Argentina, who is about as staunch a libertarian as exists on the global stage. Also uh, has five genetically identical versions. He of loves the same his dogs. dog. <laughs> he loves his dog. And so he's cloned his dog five times. He's a former uh, football player, soccer for Americans, and uh, uh, rock star. He's got a silly hair. He's got a cool uh, 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 two thumbs up pose that he does whenever he takes a picture and he is a Rothbardian uh, 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 von Mises disciple in terms of libertarian thought but this is the video uh, uh, if you are watching us on YouTube you'll be able to read the subtitles if you are only listening to us I swear to God I hope you uh, speak Spanish but just know that all the words in between afuera are different organizations that were a part of the Argentinian government that he was promising he would get rid of. Wait, pause it, pause it, pause it. Uh, pause it, pause it. Hold on, I'm working on it. Apparently, apparently the internet is shit. I can't, I literally can't connect. I can't stop it. I'm sorry, his power is too strong. I, 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 I cannot. Your ability to stop. Afuera. Afuera. <laughs> go on. Afuera means out. Anyway, go ahead. Afuera. Ministerio de Transporte. Ministry Afuera. of Transportation. Ministerio de Salud. Ministry of Health. Afuera. Ministerio de Desarrollo Social. Ministry of Social Development. Afuera. Se acabó el curro <laughs> de la política. Viva la libertad, carajo! <laughs> so the thievery of politics is over. Long live freedom. Uh... And that motherfucker got elected, and and uh, uh, bueno, so far, que... uh, uh, things are going uh, uh, well. He is very popular globally, 
We'll see whether or not it lasts. But uh, uh, there we go. Brian's got the button. Afuera! He uh, he did nutty things like, uh, I, I believe, uh, did he declare that like the U.S. dollar was the new currency of, of Argentina? I know that was what he was running on. I don't know whether or not it has happened yet. I know that he has cut a lot. He has afuera! Uh, a, a bunch of those organizations or a bunch of those ministries, but I don't know if he has repegged the Argentinian peso to the dollar, which was something that he wanted to do. So uh, folks in the chat are asking if this was a we're not wrong yes. topic. And that last, makes last last uh, Wednesday it was. As a matter of fact, that that's what I wanted to ask about. Like uh, you, you had a live show, right? We did. That was not part of the live show. That was part of the show that is out now. But uh, yeah, the live show we did. What did we do? We did. Oh, Samuel Alita's flags. <laughs> uh, uh, he. But, uh, I, I, I love giving the outside view and finding out how little I know. Like, uh, wait, wait, hold like, on, hold on. Okay. Let, me, let me let me reset it. Okay. In the words of the Pope, we dealt with Samuel Alito's flagatry. Three, four, cha and... cha. <laughs> uh, so, so if, if 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 I read the stories right from the headlines, uh, no shit, it was flagness. It was flagness. That was it. Flagness is what the Pope said. Flagatry is what me and my friends say. Anyway, go on. Okay, <laughs> if if I read the headlines, <laughs> Can I get another one of these names. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what. Let's let's go all the way. Uh, <laughs> one for me as well. <laughs> the uh, uh, if 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 I read the headlines correctly, uh, uh, it's often a sign of uh, in distress to uh, fly the American flag up. No, and down. no, no. Incorrect, according to the New York Times. Wait, that's not true. No, it was a stop the steal sign. What? Yeah. No, no, wait. Sorry. No. Nope, sorry. Ah. Uh, it was a clear sign that you supported the insurrection in Washington, D.C. on January 6th. Oh, I, I, I was trying to give context and, and, and mention, like, historically, that's what that means. So, wait, historically, what does it mean? Uh, uh, when you fly the American flag upside down, yeah. it means we're in trouble. Oh, because they did that at, like, BLM rallies and... They've done that around the world. Whenever there's any kind of problem, they just fly the flag upside down. Um, what, what is the right answer here? <laughs> Googling now. Okay. No, no, no. Yes. Yes. No, I'm, I'm bouncing stuff off you. I'm agreeing with you. Okay. Okay. Why are you? No. Yes. You just say yes. Okay. And then I do the bit where I say, no, the New York times said the opposite. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes. Justin. Uh, yeah, no, nope. is... New York times said the opposite. Oh, got it. Yeah. Now, now I know who who we're punching down on. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I feel better now. <laughs> I don't mind being in a mob punching down. I just want to know who. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, but but uh, uh, I believe the defense Samuel Alito said was, "Yo, man, my wife. Am I right?" So, <laughs> reportedly, in the Washington Post, apparently had this story years ago. Um. There was just, it was a fight in the neighborhood and they like, there was a neighbor that was, it had a sign that uh, uh, said either fuck Trump or something equivalent. And the Alitos partly felt that it was an issue because it was also just ginning up like people that would come to protest in front of their houses and other people in the neighborhood were getting upset about it. And so his wife According to uh, both the Post and and the New York Times, the wife said that she hung it upside down as a way to signal against the neighbor. Uh, but according to the Times, totally unconnected from the fact that they're going to rule on something involving January 6th next week. Uh, totally disconnected from that. Uh, uh, they decided that it was a... We support January 6th insignia. Mm. They, uh, <clears throat> uh, 
Mm. Uh, hey, Justin. Yeah. You ever, you ever, you ever find yourself in a position and maybe your comedy co-host signals something and it's about like, oh, I don't know. There was a dog lost in my yard. And then you find yourself like taking some flack from your comedy co-host uh, crowd and his decision where they're all like, why, why do you agree that all dogs should be killed? Uh, I, yes. I'd imagine that it's possible that somebody's partner might do something that wasn't on your behalf. I agree. Afuera. I was in D.C., ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I got to say, there's a lot of uh, uh, houses and representatives there. I walked through the halls of, of, of the people's house. You ever been there, Brian? I have. The back House of Representatives? Yeah. Yeah, I have. Really? I did it back when I was 17, probably when you were like seven. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I went to a, uh, I might've been, no, I might've been like nine. Yeah. I think you're, you're not, you're not 10 years older than me. You're close. Yeah. You're not. I'm close. Yeah. I'm close. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, it's, it's a smaller place than it looks on TV, isn't it? Doesn't it? And right? it looks higher. It's not, it's very low to the ground. <laughs> yep. Doesn't it, doesn't it look elevated like like the way that the way that it's shot on TV? You think that there's a little well, I I, I saw it, it from above, so I saw it from that elevated position. But you went all the way down. And oh, I fact, was on the floor. Yeah, yeah no, I was they, on the house floor. They, yeah. they apologized for us uh, or to us, saying like, "Hey, normally we take you all the way down, but uh, I don't know. Here's the terror thing of the week." But, uh, oh, this was back during the Bush administration. Yeah, 1992, I believe. Oh, uh, first Bush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, yeah, before early Bush. Yeah. yeah. Oh, close. Yeah. Firm Bush. <laughs> not that. <laughs> yeah. Not J that loose. J jumping, loose jumping out Bush. of airplanes, yeah. Bush. Yeah. Getting celebrated for parachuting. Hell Bush. yeah, that Barbara Bush. <laughs> Married, married to a grandmother, Bush. Yeah, <laughs> the one who was not going to do it. Yup. <laughs> Dick Cheney was in the cabinet, Bush. Uh, no, I. Dick I, in the cabinet. Uh, I, I Bush. I, I, I think the program was called a uh, close up at at the time, but basically, it's like you you just. Physically, Close up, Bush. You you physically went there and you watched. Yeah, you did <laughs> happen. And uh, okay, all right. Oh uh, God, I, I I you wait wait you watched the house in uh, in session. Well, we had a number of talks and a number of like breakout sessions where people would argue various positions, and it's like, well, I didn't know what it was before, but I know I'm not blank. You know that 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 kind of stuff. Um, but, oh, God damn, I probably should have remembered this guy's name. It was a House of Representatives person who addressed- Dick Army. Uh, uh no. Tom I, DeLay. I, okay. <sighs> Newt Gingrich. You know what? I feel like you're saving me from telling this sto story. No. Nope. Uh, tell the story. He told a joke, and I do not remember the setup or the punchline. Or I, I do remember the setup. I don't remember the punchline. I do remember that it was, like, casually racist about where Bishop Desmond Tutu came from. Really now? Uh, he, he's like, oh, uh. I I'm here in Congress. I'm congressman. This is all 17 year old Brian can yeah. remember. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, I had a meeting with Bishop Desmond Tutu, which I knew because I was watching Murphy Brown, uh, on ABC. Yep. Uh, 
Uh, and and that was an often punchline or whatever. And I because knew the that- vice president had already called her a whore. Uh, Dan Quayle, Murphy Brown, Wikipedia. Move on. Okay. Uh, and 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 so the version of the joke that he told was uh, it boiled down to oh I was talking to my friend uh, Desmond Bishop Tutu about our. NASA program where we're going to fly rockets all over the place and be super rocket people. And he says, Oh, we have a version of that. And then described fill in the blank. It's exactly what he said. Uh, something, something primitive, uh, probably involving coconuts or whatever. Uh, 1992 different world. Uh, it's, it's as though it was, 42 years ago, Justin. Damn. No, 20, 30, no. 32, 32, 32, 32 years ago. 32 years ago. But from 1992, 32 years from then would be 1960. So how would the joke have sounded then, Justin? I'm, <laughs> I'm <laughs> Senator... I'm sorry, House of Representatives <laughs> member Richard Milhouse Nixon <laughs> in from California. Yeah, yeah. And I uh been selected to run for the vice presidency along with Dwight D. Eisenhower. <laughs> I'd like to tell you a joke. Two Polacks walk into a bar. And say, barkeep, could you give us two beers? The barkeep says, why are you here? (laughs) And the uh, Polish gentlemen say, what? And then they fall down because they can't comprehend reality. (laughs) This is a joke to endear me to the population in 1960. Polish people will randomly fall down. (laughs) Mr. President. No, sorry. I'm just a House of Representatives member. I'm Representative Nixon from California. Representative Nixon. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, you, 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 you. With you, with, yes, you with the haircut. Go ahead. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Hello, it's me, Ronald Reagan, noted Democrat. No, at this yeah, time. Uh, no, you're, you're, you're flirting. But go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> would you clear? Would you yeah. care to explain or extrapolate on why Polish people are prone to fall down when asked whether or not they would like a beverage that the working man would like to have? I'd love to. Thank you, actor Reagan. <laughs> Polish people, as we all know, are a curious sort. They uh, have uh, been through a lot. They've dealt with a lot. If you have been through the situation of going underwater on a submarine with a screen door, then you'd know what they've gone through. (laughs) We should all have respect for the two Polish gentlemen that walked into the bar and ordered a beer in the joke that I told. Uh, uh, Mr. Representative. Yes, Mr. yes, Representative, yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, Actor Reagan here again. Uh, 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 could you speak? To- Why don't you talk like actor Ronald Reagan? <laughs> Because- Why don't you talk like SAG president, Screen Actors Guild Union President Ronald Reagan? I'm I'm trying on a role. Uh, it involves somebody who moved around a lot. Mm. Uh, 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 representative, I you- describe you in the same way that the Pope would. <laughs> 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 representative 
<laughs> Nixon. Uh, yes. Would you, would you care to comment on the? Curious... I'm Representative Nixon. <laughs> would you... I'm from Yorba Linda, California. <laughs> would, you, would you care to comment yes. on on the curious decision mm -hmm. of, of of this Polish Polish person? Yeah. To to Polacks amongst themselves. To to choose. Not me. I'm a Quaker. Among all, I keep them quaking in their boots. Among all of the creature comforts that a genie would grant uh, somebody as they cross the desert, why a yes. Polak, a, a Polish person, don't be disrespectful, <laughs> would <laughs> would choose to carry the door of a '57 Chevrolet? Well. <laughs> They're not smart. <laughs> Next question. No, 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 representative, I, if I may, uh, 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 per my uh, pro union newsletter, uh, we recently covered this story, and I do believe a genie showed up and offered a uh, 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 a union member, a non union member, and a, a Polish person. Mm. Comforts as they were to make a hundred mile trek across the desert. I'm sure you read the story, uh, Mr. Representative. No, I look forward to hearing from him. Okay, well, uh, uh, the genie uh, asked all of them, and uh, first the union representative said, uh, I would like a lot of water because it's going to be very dry on this hundred mile trek across the desert. Uh, surely you've heard this part. Smart, yes, smart. Okay, well, and then the second was offered uh, his choice, and he said, "You know what? I would like a, I, I would like food because it seems like I'll be mm. very hungry on this hundred mile trek." Wise, yes, wise, yes, yes. Uh, well, the Polish person, mm. and and I'm surprised you have no comment on this whatsoever. Re uh, requested a uh, uh, the door of a '57 Chevy to carry across the desert. Uh, do, do you have any comment on this, sir? Uh, no, I'm <laughs> looking forward to the end of this well-reported story. Well, <laughs> at the end of our interview, <laughs> it became known that while the union worker and the non-union worker were able to exchange food and water for each other, the Polish person by themselves mm. carried the door mm -hmm. so that when it felt too hot, he could roll down the window. <laughs> Have you any comment, Representative Nixon? Wise. <laughs> wise. I'm not going to need their votes for years. <laughs> And depending on when we are in 1960, it'll certainly be eight years before I have to be at the top of the ticket. I mean, I lose this year. I'm spatially self-aware Richard Nixon. I have crocked life in fullness. I have, I have, I have transcended space and time. That is it. I'm Doctor Manhattan. I have bore of these humans and their human concerns. Representative, Nixon. I am not a crook, and I am not a human. I am going to double team Silk Spectre. Wow, oh my god, I just realized what you're referencing. <laughs> it's in the first 20 pages, Brian. <laughs> Representative Nixon. Yes. <laughs> I've come unglued from time and space. My powers are becoming too great. <laughs> Representative Nixon. Yes. <laughs> How many What do you ask of me? I am only growing more powerful by the second. How many? I feel the cosmos swirling around me. I have transcended anything that could once bind me. The humiliation, that 
ants would levy upon me. To be disgraced is now to be honored. I am levitating above all of you, Brian. A question. Uh, how many dongs do you have, and why are they all blue? Well, according to the Pollock, I only have four. <laughs> <laughs> patreon.com slash great night god yes thank god by the way we love you patrons i i brian woke up early and and i uh came out so i could uh be with you guys on thursday so we could record a bones uh uh thank you guys for dealing with all the uh travel bullshit over the last few weeks because uh, there's been a lot of it and um uh now we're back on uh on a regular schedule for a little bit so uh big fat luxurious bones uh what wh how would you feel about adding not through any efforts of your own mm -hmm. but uh like even more bonus content behind the paywall. Uh, sure. Yeah. Like, like, I, and, and this is not anything we've talked about or rehearsed or anything. Uh, yeah. Like I was just thinking about like how much, I don't know, detritus or little moments we could just drop into the feed. Uh, uh, like I want to creep, I guess, I guess I'm saying I want to creep even closer to the actual vision of Diamond Club. <laughs> of, yeah, it would never be done without both of our consent. But, uh, but, but we, any of we, our conversations, we just record and put them in there. Uh, I would say more of them than we do. More, like yeah, maybe maybe lo-fi, little little five minute here or there. Mister Lo-fi, Mister Lo-fi. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm. Look, uh, I don't think that there's an element of my life that I have not sold for cash. So uh, uh, I'm 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 all about it. If we can figure out new places, I thought that I was like you know those diagrams of a cow <laughs> that shows you where all the cuts of meat are. Yeah. Like I thought I had sold all of me for cash. If you can find a new a new giblet, like like I will sell Scrapple. Like, okay. like uh, the, the, the bits that nobody wants to buy. If we can ground them up and put oatmeal in them, like, fuck it. I may I sell may, them to those dullards in Pennsylvania. I mean, like, there are times I call you about silly things. Maybe, maybe I just call you like I do anyway, uh, but then just happen to press record. And then only afterwards do I say, yo, you, <laughs> you want to put this on the feed? Sure. <laughs> All right. No, I'm, I'm, look, you can, you can call me anytime. I, I meant that to be a song, but I couldn't think of one. And so I just made one up. Uh, so, uh, tell me a bit about the, I, I think we started off with the question, tell me about the DC thing, but suddenly we, I don't think we did actually. <laughs> okay. Tell me about the DC thing. I went to Washington, DC. I went to, um, the libertarian convention we did the live show in uh, thank you to everybody who's listening to this that came to the live show. Great venue, great people that were helping us. Unfortunately, uh, uh, no air conditioning. And, and it was a little hot there in Anacostia, DC. Brian, you've done a lot of live shows. Mm. Um, do you believe in omens? Uh, yes. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I, I didn't before I started doing live shows, but but I definitely came to believe that early things can signal later things. So as Jen Briney and myself were uh, 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 making our way to the venue, we were not allowed to go get dropped off in front of the venue because. Somebody who was driving a stolen car jackknifed a public bus and then fled. So nobody could move the car because the keys weren't in the car. 
because the guy who stole the car took the keys and ran away. So that was our omen (laughs) for how the show was going to go. And thankfully, it was better than that because we were able to get everything going and uh, uh, we had good sound. We had a great crowd. Unfortunately, the air conditioning wasn't uh, working, and so it was 85 degrees before we jacked 85 people all up in that room, and so it was a little hotter. So, it was the only time that I've ever seen a, a live crowd of mine actively fanning themselves like they were in a southern church. Or, or, or they were so offended by the progressive things that you were saying, like, my laws, I can't yes. even believe Yes, like they were southern bells that were offended by our hot takes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, what? Could, what can you tell me about the makeup of the crowd? Like, like, were these all hardcore? We're not wrong fans, or were any of them like I've never heard of your show, but my friend says I had to come see this. Um, it was. It was. I mean, obviously, as 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 to any live crowd, it was ninety nine percent. People that um uh, were were longtime listeners of the show. I think the only person that came up to me and said that he wasn't a regular listener was a dude who was a regular listener of DTNS and Frog Pants, and so he knew me from other stuff, and and so came out and then then came out after the show. We all had a good time. That, drank it up. It was it was a nice time. That that would be roughly the equivalent of like when we did the live great night downtown in Austin, there were a few people who only knew me as the scam school guy. And I'm like, well, sure. Let me explain to you what's about to happen. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. I mean, I I didn't really meet anybody because we kept everybody out of that room uh, uh, until we actually absolutely had to bring them in because we knew it was hot and it was only going to get hotter. And we kept our fingers crossed that the air conditioning was going to start. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was, uh, uh, but it was, it was a great night. Uh, uh, not like the show that we're doing now, which is called Great Night, but uh, it, was, it was a really fun night, time. Yeah. Unlike this show. Which is just a bullet to the head. Good Lord. What a slog. Uh, how, how many... How many live shows, and we know you're about to have a baby, and that's going to change things, but right now... not at all. I'm the first to say nothing's going to change. I'm just going to keep that baby in my pocket, feed it two M&Ms an hour, and everything's going to be fine. How many live shows would you like to do per year? Of any variety. Whether it's politics, politics, politics. Well, I mean, like wrong. Whether it's Great Night. Whether it's so. So here's the, uh, the all set up magician. Here's the reality of the situation is that like live shows at this point, unless I was doing something totally by myself, are always going to be a loss leader, um, and that means that it's it. The, the worth of it, and I do mean this very honestly, is all about meeting everybody. It's all about audience connection. It's all about having a good time. There's a lot of artistic validation of being in front of a group of several dozen people and having them all cheer and yell your catchphrases and shit like that. Like, that really, really matters. I, I do think that that's awesome. So I would love to do it, you know, five, six times a year. I would, I would always love to have it. I think over the last few years, we've done it maybe once or twice a year. So I, I, in in a perfect world, I would love to do it more than that. The, the problem is, is that I always wind up organizing them. (laughs) And so like, if you're going to ask me, Justin, how much do you want to organize a live show and then sweat blood over like whether or not tickets are selling and whether or not you've made enough money or made it worth it for people like uh, less than that about the amount that I do now. So maybe once or twice a year, I want to put in that effort to do it. Uh, If people were just booking me to do it, then, then that's actually, no, you want to know what? Cause if you put it like that, then I got to count like scoop fest. Amazing. Super great. Like, Dude, I, I, do, do you remember the paychecks we got for that? 
Here's all I know is I got to insult the hosts for fucking a month and a half in advance. And then I spit beer in their face. And and then, uh, 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 yeah, I got to suck milk out of a fake udder on a man's leg. Like, it was it was legit. That shit was amazing. It really was. It really, really was. Uh, and in fact, I... But, 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 I, but, I, 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 I I want to retract me even pretending like doing that kind of stuff isn't the best thing on the planet. Same thing for Dragon Con and all of that stuff. But like, that's, like, that's all examples of shit that I don't have to organize. Yeah. The shit I have to organize, that's like, oh, good God. Now, I love doing it. It's really fun. And I always know that everyone's going to be taken care of because I've made sure of it. But, uh, yeah. That's, uh, 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 I don't know. I guess now if, if I were to really count it up, I probably do about what I wanted, which is like five or six a year. I probably do five or six live things. It is nice to always have something just around the corner to remind people that is about to happen. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Do you want to do more live shows? Do you, do you want to do a live show before my child's born? Yep. Yep. Uh, I, I, I want to call it a make a live show. Make a live show. Yeah. I'm, I'm a, make a like a high, make a live show. Actually, I'm suddenly uncomfortable with this. So I, I don't mess around with, with accidentally saying things that could haunt me. I, I, like what? Well, no, go ahead. Do it now. We want to have it recorded. I once swore on my family that I would meet up with somebody and then I didn't meet up with them. And then my dog got run over by a car. And now, despite being a hardened skeptic, I don't mess with that. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's straight up voodoo. It's irrational. I understand it. I no no no. I, I get that because one time, um, I don't talk about this a lot, but um, this was years ago. My grandmother, um, uh, got run over by a reindeer. <laughs> God damn it! God damn it! No, no. <laughs> You know, people say they don't believe in Santa, but like, as for me and Grandpa, you believe. Oh, we believe. <laughs> oh, we believe. That woman's dead, Brian. That woman's dead. <laughs> she Triple. lived through the Great Depression, Brian. <laughs> she lived through the Great Depression. Dancing marathons is where she met her husband. She was run over by a reindeer. <laughs> by the way, Chrysler's worst product ever. <laughs> the Chrysler reindeer. <laughs> Nothing can stop it. <laughs> if you get into a fight with another car, this one will win. That was an Elon Musk joke. What? Uh, that's a literal line from the Cybertruck thing. If, if your car gets in an argument with another car... It'll win? It'll win. Oh. Yeah. Which uh, made people afraid of the Cybertruck. Yeah. It does look like an unrendered car from a PS1 game. Which is its own level of intimidation. Which, by the way, I didn't hear anybody saying about the Batmobile. Apparently, it's fine, for, it's fine yeah. when you're a billionaire... But not fine when you're a billionaire. They should have had Morgan Freeman announce it. <laughs> uh, like, like like they did in that movie. And, uh, then, and then Christian Bale would say, does it come in black? <laughs> it's a also, it's apparently fine to scrub all communications through an entire metropolis when you're a billionaire. But not when you're a billionaire. <laughs> nope. Wrong. Fucking wrong. Wrong. I just want to shit all over Batman. I'm sorry. You want to wait? Well, no, but that wasn't the first Batman. That was 
the second Batman. No, I think when did the third Batman? No, it when, was, when he it when was, he fucks was, with all the uh, the Dark Knight. It was the second one. He, second one. See, the key to being a great detective, Justin, yeah. is just just illegally monitoring everybody's communications. That's all you have to do. Seems like a good way to do it. Well, it certainly makes you a great detective when yeah. you when you just you know monitor everybody's communications without their permission. Oh, look at vigilante gatekeeper Brian Brushwood. Oh, no. oh, you can only vigilante only break these laws. These laws are cool to break. These laws don't break them. They're my laws. No, vigilante <laughs> guy who breaks laws to bring justice. Don't do them. These laws are fun. Okay. Uh, Assault. I, I, <laughs> okay. I, I, I like where this is headed. Kidnapping. Fine. I I like where this is headed. Don't spoil my cell phone. I, Batman. I need a name for my character and a look. <laughs> Let's Everybody at it. the Libertarian Conference. That's <laughs> that's the name of your character. Everybody I met, every delegate at the Libertarian Conference. Uh, at the, uh, conference. <laughs> Vigilante gatekeeper. Kicks in the door like, what's happening? She's like, uh, uh, I'm exchanging money for sex. And it's, I'm... Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Fly, flies over. Na, 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 na. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm manufacturing meth. Uh, okay. <laughs> Is it within your lease? Uh, well, that's a simple... No, do it in the Batman voice. <clears throat> what are you doing? I'm making meth. Is that in agreement with your... Personally, civilly agreed upon lease. No, I'm, I'm just squatting here making meth. I'm selling it to children. This seems like a suit for civil court. I'll be on my way. Flap, flap, ba -na 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 -na. <laughs> <laughs> Officer, what are you doing to this man you've pulled over? I'm punching him. <laughs> well, that seems like. Uh, 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 he was resisting. Well, okay, this is increasing. Oh, he keeps resisting. Okay. Oh, oh shit! This motherfucker's resisting like nobody's business. Uh, uh, all punch, all punch, taxation punch. is theft. Flap flap flap. <laughs> Like he does, he doesn't symbolic Batman, <laughs> just symbolic Batman. <laughs> uh, wait, hold on, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Uh, 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 uh. Commissioner Gordon lights the symbolic Batman symbol. Oh, all right. flap, 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 flap. What, Commissioner Gordon? What's going on, Batman? Yes, Joker's taking over City Hall. Libertarian he says, Batman. <laughs> I didn't know. It's very on brand for Libertarian Batman to randomly change the name for no reason. Anyway, Libertarian Batman, uh, Joker's taking over City Hall. He says if we don't pay him $50 million, he's going to kill the mayor. Nah, has he hurt anyone yet? Well, he, he beat up a bunch of people to take over City Hall, and he's saying that if we don't, Pay him $50 million, he's going to kill the mayor. Okay, well, it seems to me like he has a monopoly on violence, much like our U.S. government. So I say we compensate the people who are beat up, and we pay him whatever he asks. Flap, 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 flap. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, shit. That's good. That's fucking good. Uh, uh, yeah, no, the Libertarian Conference was wild, man. People were drunk to see Trump speak. Okay, so talk to me about this, because you've seen Trump a few times. Mostly, yeah. it's for, I'd say the word sober, but I suspect there's some other similar condition that overtakes anybody over 70. Well... 
if there is beer sold at Trump events, it is not the number one thing that is happening. Like in, in, in the same way that like, if you're at a County fair, like, yes, people might be drinking, but it's not a it, drunk it, event. It's mainly right? fun, funnel cakes. Sure. Yeah. But like, there, there's just enough. There, there's a critical mass of people that are not boozing. The, the libertarian speech was just like dragon con on a Saturday night. Like it was just people who were either already drunk and high. And then they came in, they had a clear secret service by the way. Uh, and then we're just wrecking these bar carts that were, that were wheeled in by the Hilton. Like it was a boozy affair and libertarians are mouthy no matter what. So, so they, they boo their own. There was no way they weren't going to boo this man. There's only one beer that I would love to know the popularity of. Okay. And I bet you can guess which one I can't. And I don't know because they were all in clear cups. Okay. Uh, it was Bud Light. Uh, oh no, I don't know if there was, I, I don't even know. I, I, I will take a wild guess and assume it was being sold, but, uh, yeah, I should have, I should have paid attention to that. You're right. That was a miss by me. Uh, I did hear that a person and you later told me it was the candidate. Oh shit. All right, here, let me, let me uh, go ahead and say what you know about this person. Okay. And, and All I know is that somebody was giving a speech. It was just like, anyway, I got to go. And then just left. And then everyone was like, that was a really weird speech. And then they were like, well, it was a presidential candidate. And uh, he did later admit that he had taken a gummy at the Libertarian Convention. <laughs> Michael Rechtenwald. <laughs> Otherwise known as uh, the anti woke NYU professor, if there are any. Oh, he's anti woke, if by which you mean awake, <laughs> because that dude went to bed. Well, yeah. Uh, 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 so he is, uh, if there are any Tim Cast fans, uh, he is a regular person there. He was uh, uh, somebody that was um, uh, tipped to be the nominee for the Libertarian Party, mostly because he was backed by the Mises Caucus. That is the uh, uh, the ascendant caucus within the Libertarian Party. Brian, go ahead and check your uh, your 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 email there. Okay. Um, uh, in 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 the means in the meantime, uh, I, it took me a while to find out like kind of what the Mises Caucus be like. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, like, look, we this can be a thirty minute conversation or be a, be a, a one minute conversation. The Mises Caucus essentially just understand to be the very online, very culture war focused element of the libertarian. Uh, uh, body politic uh, 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 but they have been well organized enough that they have taken over a lot of the delegate slots of the libertarian party and so when their pick for party chair got elected on saturday it seemed like fait accompli that their nominee would be who got the uh, slot at the end of sunday so it's saturday night donald trump is uh, uh, about to go on, and as negotiated by the Libertarian Party, they had a few slots to speak before. Uh, uh, Angela McCardle comes out, and she speaks. She's the, the recently re-elected chair of the Libertarian Party. Uh, Dave Smith speaks after this, but in the middle is Michael Rechtenwald. In the room, including your boy, Everybody thinks that this man is going to be the libertarian nominee for president, which however little you think of that organization, however little you might think of that label, understand that that is amongst the Republicans 
and Democrats, the only other party that has 50 states that can vote on the exact same candidate is the Libertarian Party. I, and so that is that is a that is a coveted position. Right, real quick, uh, I, I don't know if you sent it to uh, the fast email or the slow at email. Gmail. Uh, okay, what at Gmail? Uh, well, uh, well, now they know. Okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> You've given that away before. Uh, well, that uh, what I usually do is I publicly tell everyone Brian at Schwood com, which takes about five oh. minutes to arrive at Schwood at Gmail com, but then I reply from schwit at gmail.com but it, it doesn't matter it's all the same bucket uh but but i i have not yet received anything damn it this is probably an apple thing isn't it nice that we both sync up all right talk more shit and i'll send it on another one. Oh, I'll talk shit. Uh, Nathan, no. uh, 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 what do you know about the Libertarian Party? Honestly, surprisingly little. Um, surprisingly? Yeah. I mean, I, I listen to Justin's things, so I should know more, but, you know, me. Um, I know they have the 50 state ballot acts that was just said. They were kind of founded on the idea of kind of bring me liberty or bring me death, kind of dissenters just in every possible thing. And. From what I'm hearing right now, kind of the middle crazies? Well, uh, th there is a case to be made, and I thought this was interesting because I always thought like every time I voted third party that I'm essentially throwing away my vote for essentially a vote for n none of the above. But uh, I heard a pretty good case made for by voting consistently you know, in the middle or being n independent – uh, no, you're you're not going to win ever. However, what you will do is you will affect policy where it's like, let's say both sides are at 47% and they detect that that middle undecided 6%, it's like they will uh, choose between them which one of them wants to pursue that middle 6%. So in a weird way, you actually kind of do have a vote even though you don't have a vote. It's... It's weird. Uh, I don't know. I, I Being just... in a republic is kind of weird like that. Yeah. Hey, Justin. How are you, man? Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no. Keep all going. Right, We're all, all, right, all right. All right. All right. I, I, uh, let me ask you this, sure. Nathan. Um, uh, if you could choose between a true democracy and a republic, which would you rather have? Oh, good God. Um, hold on. Hold on. We, we need to establish some baselines here. Are we talking like... The way we have set up America right now, are we going to do like balkanize it? Uh, well, I, I, uh, my question being, would you rather actually have every single vote, quote unquote, count uh, in that like whatever the most people vote for, that's what goes? Mm -hmm. Or would you rather everybody vote for representatives who act on their behalf? So – I, I have a weirder perspective on that. So, like, from this Weirder. Weirder than the Founding Fathers. Okay. I guess I suppose by that logic, I have a pretty sane perspective, but we'll get to that in a moment. So, I mean, A, I was a history major before I swapped. So, like, this is actually my bag of, like, I really love this sort of thing. So, my initial answer... All right. So, so far, we've got that you you were a history mess uh, messenger and and this is your bag yes we're all history messengers Brian. <laughs> all right so i guess going strictly from like what has been done before also check your email brian okay i would honestly go with republic just because it's although i do love the idea of being able to like fully have a vote and properly like go through the steps of all that mm. i like having a potentially maybe sane driver at the wheel that can make a fucking decision so that's that's kind of my perspective there but i mean in what, do, what do you so so wait, you're a republican gross I'd say, wait, 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 gross maybe wait. ew hold on don't say that shit if you're going in i mean you're 20 man don't say that shit in college wait what about uh, i'm trying to get you uh, late man don't that, say that shit now I want to play defense. For uh, don't uh, say I, I, it. The, uh, don't I, I, say Because I'm giving that don't. time. Uh, Trust how, me. How do you don't. feel about... You're going to want to say it. Don't say it. 
How do you feel about it's the Oscars? me, 1960s Richard Nixon. <laughs> oh, I'm a- just saying, Nathan, don't say it. A lot of people will want you to say it. You shouldn't say it. Never do it. Do you have any other uh, advice that you'd like from me, 1960s Richard Nixon? 1960s Richard Nixon. Yes, it's me. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I won a race by saying that my opponent was as pink as her underwear because she was a commie. That's a real fact about me, 1960 Richard Nixon. Another fact is that... uh, He was going to ask advice, Brian. Okay. Uh, uh, Do you have another fact? We're layering bits. (laughs) (laughs) Bits on bits on bits on bits. All right. Well, one of you go. <laughs> All right. Well, I, 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 I still have not received an email. God Nin- damn it. He's Richard Nixon. Okay. As a, I guess, somewhat chromosome at this time period somewhere, what is your advice for surviving politics in 1960s Richard Nixon? Well, <laughs> since I'm unstuck in time, I know I didn't fucking do it in 1960. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> You're welcome. I, I I was vice president for eight years. <laughs> and then if you, if you had listened to Raise the Dead, you'd know this I'll shit just already. read the history. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I got my fucking leg stuck in a door. <laughs> and then I showed up looking like a pile of shit on television. And everybody made fun of me to this day. I'm 1960s Richard Nixon. So don't do that. Okay. So- I thought I was giving you advice about college. Okay. And that was the bit. Don't ask me about my life. I live a haunted existence, living in my own failures for infinity. Okay. Nice. Why won't this fucking email work? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to send an awkward video of Michael Rexenwald to Brian Brushwood, and it's being a piece of dog shit. <laughs> Now, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Nixon, I, I, you sound a little bit like a familiar character on this show right now. What? No, what? <laughs> what do you... <laughs> I mean, Are you just pointing out <laughs> that I have a limited range in impressions? I mean, I was I, I thought I was opening up another way to kill time while I wait for your email, but, uh, you know, we can go that route. Uh, 1960. No, what are you talking about? I mean, have you ever sailed a boat, Mr. Nixon? Totally different impression. (laughs) Okay. Do you think that I'm Captain Morgan? No! I think you might be related to him, though. This... Mahoy, bro. <laughs> totally different impression. I know. Well, I know. Uh, Why Cap- would you think that I'm Richard Nixon? Cap- There's Cap- a- hey, hey, Captain Morgan. <laughs> we're totally different people. I know. If we were different people, how would we do this bit? I know. I'm a teetotaling man who's been unstruck in time. I lost the 1960 election and then completed the ultimate comeback in 1968. Well, I'm Captain Morgan. I was a real person. And then I went through the seven seas. Do you say through the seven seas? No, fuck you. You fucking piece of shit. I was glad I voted for Kennedy. Well, I will never... Haldeman was right. Fuck you! <laughs> we, uh, 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 Representative Nixon, it's me, uh, 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 Agent Reagan. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you said teetotaling. That's that's not consistent with the reputation that 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 I know of of Richard Nixon. As far as you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because was I I recorded everything. You want to know who put those things in? LBJ, your best friend in Austin. Uh, 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 I don't know. Yeah. So 1960s Richard Nixon. Yes. You mentioned giving me some advice for college, correct? Yes. So, how do I do public? God damn it. Why won't this shit send? (laughs) 
<laughs> I can't. I'm, I'm befuddled. <laughs> Let me just try to do it through this. God damn it. Why won't it fucking... I, how, what do you need to do to send a goddamn attachment in fucking iCloud? <laughs> Subject video. <laughs> right. Where's the attached part? Hold on. I, uh, God damn it. I, 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 Send video. Re Representative Nixon. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, I believe we're downloading it right now. I Wait, you got it? Yes. Oh, yes. well, how the fuck did you tell me? Uh, well, yeah, because it just happened. Uh, here, here we go. Let's take a little look. See what we got here. Oh, look at this. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Pause it. Reset it, and you have to ha have him on screen because, uh, uh, again, this is right before Donald Trump. Uh, uh, which is going to be the time where the most media and the most amount of people are in that room because they're going to do stuff afterward. But this is the only slot given to somebody that had a shot at the nomination. It was assumed to be him being the leading uh, uh, person to do it. And this is what he does in front of that crowd. The, the presidential about to be nominee yep. of the Michael Libertarian Michael Rechtenwald. Party. Okay, here we yeah. go. All right, let's see. Let's see. All right, so far we've seen like five fist bumps. And Wait, what the fuck is happening with this? I don't know. It, it's glitching out, but but I definitely saw him. No, no, because you need to watch it in full frame to understand how awkward it is. Okay. Uh, it can, it, it, if it glitches out, it's going to overwrite the awkwardness. You have to sit with it. Okay. All right. Well, here, let me try this. Instead of going full screen, I'll, I'll do this, and I'll just sort of move this. Uh, nope. <laughs> How about this? There we go. We like this. Yeah. Okay. We all love right. it. All right. All right. We so, want some so more of it. You 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 won't believe what color the, his skin is and whether or not he's wearing a suit. Uh, but you won't believe the number of times he pumps his fists as though he's watching Arsenio Hall in 1992. Here we go. <laughs> Clapping, clapping, walking away from the podium, and off stage. Oh nope! Walking back Walk to back. the podium. Walking back to the podium. Considering the podium. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> is 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 that as far as he got? That was the clip that I that I recorded. I really wish it would have played clean, but I guess that that was not in the cards for tonight, either from what I sent you or uh, uh, the way that it's playing. Uh, uh, but you want to know what? You live, you learn, you lie, you learn, you lose, you learn, you cry. You learn. You cream. You learn. You crop. You crop. You learn. You drop. You learn. 1960s Richard Nixon <laughs> singing the hits. Uh, God, I kind of want to get a guitar in here just so I could play one We chord. do need to get the guitar. All right. uh, and now I'm understanding why people are saying it's Captain Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> Simple guitar riff. <laughs> Patreon.com slash great. All right, here we go. Here we go. Hold on. Here we go. Uh, 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 I don't know. Why do you think we sing what we should be in a band? I think so too. Now that I know that we can perfectly harmonize. <laughs> there we go. All right, here. Let's see if we got this. Oh. 
Richard Nixon. Yes. You want to sing? Me, Richard Nixon. I... It's Fitzgerald it's Kennedy. Thus made Zarathustra. Not this the movie. son who had his brain eaten by a worm. All right, look, I, ju- yeah, but ju- the one who had his brain shot with a gun. <laughs> Not his brother. Too many oh, no, Kennedys no, that no, were killed with a gun. There's lyrics in this. Don't don't play lyrics. I want to sing. Nathan, thank you very much for fixing the echo problem. Uh, you're a champion. Uh, please learn more history. Uh, yeah. Richard House yeah. Nixon. Yeah. Learn more history. <laughs> like my history. Richard Millhouse Nixon's history. <laughs> I'm a recurring character. I'm coming back. <laughs> you think this is a one episode deal? It's not. It's not. Fair no, it's not. I'll be back. I'm going to be back. And there's one thing you know about Richard Nixon. It's that he'll be back. That's true. That's yeah. True. Um, yeah. Also, not a, not a crook. Not a I it might be. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> the fuck do I care about you fucking weirdos anymore? <laughs> All right, like, we we love you guys. We will see you next Tuesday. Die in a fire.